Hey everyone, it's Brett Hornby here. If this is going to be the last episode of Season 1 of my Calgary Rough next this month, well, I'm going to say go get your favorite snack and favorite drink here because you're in for a treat here as it's time for another episode of... Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. Here's the episode number seven for my Calgary Rough next this month. And if you go back to the April video, last episode here, we were definitely ending off the season strong here after an up and down season here. And we did ultimately finish the season at 10 and eight and finish third in the West Division here. So as I recap, up here in May here. This is all solely on um, how the Calgary Roughnecks did in the playoffs here and you know what and I think you're going to be in for a treat here if you watch this till the very end here and uh, I'm not going to be as uh, anticlimactic in this video compared to my final episode of season one of my Calgary Stampeders this month but uh, you know there'll be some extra goodies at the end here. So anyway, here we go. Let's recap the playoffs here for the Calgary Rough next year. And, uh, you know, just like the whole season that's been unexpected here, I'm going to have to say this playoff run was also unexpected here on how it played out. And ultimately, uh, let's say I was a little happy how it ended here. So uh, let's bring up my notes here. Let's start off Season 7. Episode 7 of the My Kyrie Rough Next This Month. This will be the final episode on recapping games here because uh, after this, we're into the NLL offseason here and I'll talk about what I plan to do for any offseason content here after recap how the playoffs went here. So, game one of the first game of the playoffs here, if we go back to Monday, May the 6th here. The Calgary Roughnecks, as if you go back to my last video here, we found out that we drew the San Diego Seals here for the West Division semifinal here. While well, both the Calgary Roughnecks and the San Diego Seals both had identical 10 and 8 records here, the San Diego Seals did win the regular season series over the Calgary Roughnecks 2 to 1. So which meant that the San Diego Seals got to host the West semifinal here and given this is the first uh, season for the San Diego Seals here and this is the first ever playoff matchup here. So uh, how did this game go for the first ever time the Calgary Roughnecks take on the San Diego Seals in the uh, playoffs here? Well actually it started off very good and very fast here as in the first quarter. Curtis Superman Dixon scored literally 25 seconds into the game. And they also scored a goal with literally one second to go in the first quarter here. So Curtis Superman Dixon had two goals here in the first quarter here. However, the San Diego Seals in between, they scored three goals themselves. So after the first quarter, it was 3-2 San Diego Seals after one here. Second quarter, the San Diego Seals actually extended the lead as they made it 5-2 to two early in the second quarter here. However, the Calgary Roughnecks, like they have many times this season or a few times when they were successful here, was able to crawl right back and, uh, and they did just that as they came back and tied the game at 5-5. Dane Dolby scored two goals in this game with Jesse King scoring the one in between here. So, uh, and all three goals that the Calgary Roughnecks scored here were on the power play here. So like in the first quarter, Curtis, Curtis Superman Dixon scored one late in the uh, quarter here, just like the first quarter here, to tie the game at 6-6, but that was at 1.15 to go in the sec second quarter here after Dan Dawson scored it a minute later. So... Uh, Right at halftime here, it was 6-6, Roughnecks and Seals here, which 
which you almost can expect that. I mean, both goaltenders for the in this game here. You had uh, Christian Del Bianco for the Power Roughnecks. He's played well all season. And then you got Frank Escaliano, the former Roughneck here. That a couple of these games that we played with San Diego featured some goaltending duels here. So it was 6 6 at halftime here. And it looks like in the second quarter here, to start the third quarter here, very similar to the second quarter here, San Diego Seals actually scored two quick goals here after the first couple minutes, and it made it 8 6 for the uh, San Diego Seals here. So once again, the uh, Canada Roughnecks need to play catch up in this game, and you know what? They did able to play some catch up here as Mitch Wild got the Calgary Roughnecks within one with the five minute mark of the third quarter here. However, the San Diego Seals scored two more goals here at both of the nine and ten minute marks to make it 10 7 for the Seals here. And then with four minutes to go, and that's where we were with four minutes to go in the third quarter here. And then they do me. At the 11 and a half minute mark of the third quarter here, got Calgary within two to make it 10-8 San Diego, and that's how things ended after the third quarter here. So uh, Calgary is looking like they could be in trouble here and needed a fourth quarter if they were going to want to win in advance here. And you know what? I'm going to say the fourth quarter they did deliver here as both Jesse King and... Tyler Burton in the first three minutes of the fourth quarter scored to tie this game up at 10 to 10 here. So, uh, just, and that was just before the three minute mark here. So, uh, back to being in anyone's game here. However, Turner Evans for the San Diego Seals here made 11 10 just at the four minute mark. However, Riley Lowen ties it up at 11, nearly 19 seconds later here. So, as it looked like when the San Diego Seals were going to pull away here in the fourth quarter here we answer right back here so it's 11 11 here and then just after the seven minute mark here Curtis Superman Dixon got, gave Calgary its lead of the game that the only other time they led in the game was when Curtis Superman Dixon scored the first 20 sec five seconds in the game here so Curtis Superman Dixon scored to give Calgary a 12 to 11 lead here this is just about halfway through the fourth quarter here. And then things uh, got tighter here as the second half of the fourth quarter here. Calgary had a one goal lead here. Chris Del Bianco and uh, Frankie Scigliano continued on their goaltending video duel here. As Chris Del Bianco definitely needed to come up huge here. As uh, San Diego was uh, seeking the tying goal here. However, eventually... The game ended off with the Calgary Roughnecks just hanging on here to win this game 12 to 11 here, and they will get to advance to the West Division final here. So before we talk about who we draw here in the West Division final here, let's talk about who led the way for each team here. As Calgary was led by Curtis Superman Dixon, he had uh, four goals and three assists here, and then Jay Doby, he continued his uh, dominant season with three goals and four assists here. And that's Jesse King, the guy we got from the Georgia Swarm who didn't come in to play until late in the season here. He continued his uh, strong playoff play with two goals and assists here. If you look at the San Diego side of the ball here, Turner Evans led the way with three goals and one assist here, as well as Dan Dawson. He had a goal and four assists here. And then Kyle Buchanan for the uh, San Diego Seals. Had two goals and four assists here. And then when it comes to shots here, while well, the San Diego Seals did outshoot the Calgary Roughnecks 54 to 43 there. While well, Christian Del Bianco, he made 43 saves in the win. While well, Frankie Scigliano made 31 saves in the loss for the uh, San Diego Seals here. And then, like I say, going back to the top here, the reason why this game wasn't played until Monday and it was a 8.30 ball drop at the Pachanga Arena here was apparently the ice capades were in town here so Calgary knew who they were going to play in the next round here. This was the last game to actually get played in the West semifinal here but if you look at the west side of the bracket here the Colorado Mammoth actually 
upset the Saskatchewan Rush by beating them 11-10 in overtime here. So the Calgary Roughnecks will get to draw the Colorado Mammoth for the West Division final here. And actually will get a home game in the process, which is a definitely a pleasant surprise here. And then if you go look out east here, it pretty much went as expected as out west here. The road teams actually won both uh, games in the semifinal here. Well, in the east, while well, the Buffalo Bandits beat the New England Black Wolves 13 to 6 there. That was the 1 4 matchup here. And the Toronto Ruck got past the uh, Georgia Swarm here, although actually a bespoke here. Actually, the Toronto Rock was the road team here, but they were in the same situation as the Calgary Roughnecks. They had the same record here, so I actually it was three out of four teams on the road that actually won. Buffalo Bandits won 13 to six. That was the one four, and then the Toronto Rock was the three seed. They beat the Georgia Swarm 16 to 14 here. So what sets up the finals here is you got Buffalo hosting Toronto. And then you got Calgary hosting Colorado here. So that's definitely a pleasant surprise here. I'm not too sure if this was a favorable matchup here, though, because, well, favorable if you look at the regular season here, but the playoff history, definitely much, much more favorable here. So if you go back to Friday, May the 10th, and the fact that this game happened on a Friday night here made it so I was able to actually catch this game before going on my annual spring vacation here. So the West Division Final was at the Scotiabank Seldom 7 p.m. ball drop and this was after the grind in San Diego the Monday night here. So Calgary had a shorter schedule here. So uh, even though the Colorado Mammoth had a 6-12 and 12 record here in the regular season here, they uh, actually won the season series over the Calgary Roughnecks by winning two out of three here, so two to one here. However, actually in the playoffs here, this has actually been a favorable matchup here because coming into this game here, Calgary has actually beaten Colorado seven out of eight playoff games since since uh, they've been playing each other in the playoffs here. So uh, that's how you slice it here, but uh, we're definitely pleasantly surprised that uh, Calgary's playing Colorado. So I honestly thought we would be playing Saskatchewan in Saskatchewan here, but uh, you know, that's how the playoffs go here, and uh, as I've also been saying in this game coming kind of this game, we'll see if this Calgary team had better luck against Colorado in the playoffs, because unfortunately the Calgary Flames did not have much luck against the Colorado Avalanche here, but maybe the Calgary Roughnecks will make things up as both teams are actually owned by their respective Hockey teams here. And then like the previous matchups here, you got Christian Del Bianco for the goaltending for Calgary. And then you got Dylan Ward, the goalie for the Colorado Mammoth here. And if the regular season series was any indication here, we're going to be in for a goaltending duel. And it definitely was a goaltending duel to the max here in this game. As uh, first quarter, nobody actually scored. Nobody scored in this game in the first quarter as both goalies look sharp here. The only thing to highlight in the first quarter there was, well, this could have potentially swayed the game here, as that literally the last play in the uh, first quarter here, Eli Salama, he did a, I think it was a questionable call, especially for a major, as he had a, took a five minute, five minute major penalty for body checking there, because I remember how the play happened was Dylan Ward it was, the clock was lying down there, and he was trying to do a long pass here, and, a, and the ball was up in for grabs at the center field there, and Eli Slama, and there was bodies colliding there, but uh, I felt that was a questionable call there, so Calgary going into the second quarter here was going to be a man down for five minutes, and that's definitely a, a huge, I mean, a five-minute major in hockey is a huge hole to get out of. Well, I'd say even more so in lacrosse, because it's you always got more changes of possession there, especially with a shot clock. I mean, hockey would definitely be crazy if uh, if they implemented a shot thirty second shot clock before you you know got possession there. So uh, so anyway, not only Calgary actually was able to kill off that penalty, 
we were able to get a goal here on the power play as Colorado took a penalty late in that penalty as the clock was running down for Eli Slama here. But it wasn't until the 541 minute mark of the second quarter here that Tyler Pace scored to make it one nothing. And uh, this has definitely been the longest lacrosse game that I've ever been to, to not see a goal. And then Curtis Superman Dixon early with nine seconds to go in the second quarter here. Scored to make it 2 0, and it was 2 0 Calgary at halftime in the lacrosse game. That's crazy. But it tells you how strong the goaltending was, but it was definitely a, a tight game here with the strong goaltending on both sides here. So 2 0 at halftime here. So heading into the second half here, well, Jesse King scored for Calgary just after the first minute to make it 3 0. So Calgary scored late going into the locker room and then scored another one. Just coming out here to take a 3 0 lead here. However, Colorado was able to score their first goal of the game a minute later. So it made it 3 1, and I felt things did open up just a little after that goal here. As a uh, bit after that, Dave Dolby scored just over two and a half minutes later on two power play goals, and then as you both have Jane Dolby and uh, Jesse King here also scoring. So now it was 6-1 for the Calgary Roughnecks here as during this game Colorado did get into penalty trouble here and Calgary had a great power play going down the stretch here so they definitely capitalized on that. Colorado did score two more goals here in the third quarter to make it 6-3 here and that's how things looked after the third quarter there. It was 6-3 for the Calgary Roughnecks here. It was still was a Low scoring tight game here. So uh, now going into the fourth quarter here, Curtis Superman Dixon just scored past the minute and a half minute, minute and a half mark to make it 7 3 for the Calgary Roughnecks before Ryan Lee of the Colorado Mammoth scored at the seven minute mark to make it 7 4 there. So I still felt this game, while well, wasn't, well, Calgary was in good position being up by three goals here, I felt it wasn't safe to say we were going to win it just yet because things can still turn on the dime here. So the game did feel tense at this point. It was not until when Reese Kelly scored at the 10 and a half minute mark to give Calgary an 8-4 4 goal lead here that I felt that I felt pretty good that the Calgary Roughnecks were championship bound here as uh, an announcement today that's how it came down to is that Calgary was able to run out the clock here and uh Goaltending definitely stood up for both sides here, but uh, eventually the Calgary Roughnecks uh, beat the Colorado Mammoth 8 to 4 here, and they're off to the NLL Championship Final here. This will be the fourth time that the Calgary Roughnecks will be going to the NLL Championship here, and they're seeking their first championship win since 2009 here. So, uh, considering where we were a few months ago, I'm definitely pleasantly surprised that the Calgary Roughnecks are off to the NLL Championship here. So who led the way for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks in this tight, low-scoring goaltending duel here? Well, Dave Doby still was able to get two goals and four assists here. And then Curtis Superman Dixon had two goals and two assists. And then Jesse King contributed with two goals and assists. And Reese Dutch had three assists there. And then for the Colorado side of the ball here, well, I can highlight that uh, Ryan Lee had two goals and uh, Chris Wardle, three assists, and then Eli McLaughlin, he had a quiet night with a goal and two assists here. Calgary did barely outshot the Colorado Mammoth 54-51 here. Christian Del Bianco definitely was strong at points and made 46 saves, while Dylan Ward was, I think he'll say, just as strong there, but uh, Calgary's offense was definitely a lot more lethal there. He made 47 saves there. So the Calgary Roughnecks are off to the finals. And uh, keep in mind here, the NLL Championship is a best of three series here. So who do the Calgary Roughnecks get to play in the NLL final here? Well, in the East Division final, the Buffalo Bandits beat the Toronto Rock. 12 to 8 here, so the NLL Finals will feature the league's best, Buffalo Bandits, 
who were 14 to 4 in the regular season versus the 10 and 8 Cutter Roughnecks who had a so-so season but a very strong finish and they were definitely looking poised to be potentially championship bound here going into the finals here. So how the schedule works here is that on Saturday, May the 18th, game one would be in Buffalo because they had the better record here. It was a 5.30 p.m. ball drop at the Key Bank Center, also where the Buffalo Sabres play. And then on Saturday, May the 25th, would be game two. It'll be here in Calgary. The Scotia, it would be here in Calgary at the Scotia Bank Seldom for a 7 p.m. ball drop there. And if game three is needed, it would have been on Friday, May the... It would be on Friday, May the 31st, on the... Back in Buffalo at the Key Bank Center with a 5 p.m. ball drop here. So, uh... How does this play out here? Well, if looking at the... Season series here, the Calgary Roughnecks lost their only matchup to the Buffalo Bandits. In a close spot, Calgary looked good in that game. It was a 12-10 loss there back in February there, but a, a few moments... Late in the game, if a few inches were, things could have played out differently there. And then playoff history here. Well, the actually the first game that the Calgary Roughnecks ever got to play in the playoffs back in 2003. The Buffalo Bandits won the quarterfinals. But in 2004, the Calgary Roughnecks won their first NLL championship over the Buffalo Bandits here. So coming in here, both teams had a win and loss here. It was the home team winning the game in both cases here. And then when it comes to uh, finals appearances and championships, well, Buffalo, this is will be their 10th time in the league championship here. They won four titles. The most recent one that they won was back in 2008 here. And then for Calgary, this was the fourth time that they've been in the finals. And they won two titles, most recently in the... 2009 here, so that's just, uh, you know, <coughs> brief numbers here. Buffalo, I said, was the top team with a 14-4 record, and Calgary had a 10-8 record here, and uh, I'm going to say, that's, let's get to game one here. And then once again, if you have goaltending duels in lacrosse here, well, the first quarter was your cup of tea here, as uh, you got Christian Del Bianco for the Calgary Roughnecks, and then Matt Vinch for the Buffalo Bandits facing off each other here. And then, just like the previous two playoff games here, the Calgary Roughnecks did score first, just past the eight. It wasn't until the eight and a half minute mark of the first quarter here as Reese Dutch scored. And then Corey Small for the Buffalo Bandits tied it up five minutes later. So it was 1 1 after the first quarter here. And that's how things looked. Low scoring continues. Into the second quarter here as Dane Smith for Buffalo gives Buffalo the first lead of the game here. At the, it wasn't until the nine and a half minute mark of the second quarter here that Buffalo makes it two to one here. And then Reese Dutch once again for the Calgary Roughnecks scored again just past the 13 minute mark to tie the game at two. And at halftime it was two two here. So uh, this game was very similar to the Calgary Colorado game, except they had a little more offense, but uh, it was definitely low scoring half in in all history here. However, things did open up here in the second half here for the finals here is uh first former roughneck Shane Evans scored past the four minute mark, gave Buffalo a three two lead here, and then uh, just bef before Dan McCree, he actually tied it up nearly forty two seconds later. So we had a 3-3 game here. And then Curtis Superman Dixon, just before the 11 minute mark for the Calgary Roughnecks, gives Calgary a 4-3 lead here. And then with 10 seconds to go in the uh, third quarter here, Dane Doby, our league's leading scorer, makes it 5-3 for Calgary. And heading into the fourth quarter, the Calgary Roughnecks were up 5-3 here. And then Dane Doby once again scores this time early in the first fourth quarter here, 30 34 second mark to make it a 6-3 Calgary game. And then Corey Small scores a second of the game literally a minute later to make it 6-4 for Calgary early in the fourth quarter here. And then both teams pretty much traded uh, three goal stretches here. As first Calgary scored three goals and 
matter of two and a half minutes. You got Dan Dolby, Jesse King, and Dan Taylor for Calgary. <coughs> Makes it a nine to four get lead just before the five minute mark here. So things were starting to look a little cozy here. That maybe the Calgary Roughnecks will uh, have a you know easy lead going in and take a one nothing lead to come home here. However, Buffalo did answer back, as I mentioned, with a three goal. Stretch of their own here, as Josh Bryan scored twice, and Chase Fraser also was in there as well. So it was 9-7 Buffalo at the 9.5 minute mark here, so the game got uh, close again, and with 9.5 minutes to go here, and it could happen when it's a two-goal lead on there. However, the game stayed that way until it wasn't until Mitch Wild at the 13.5 minute mark. He put it in the empty net there as Buffalo was trying to... Uh, Get closer here with the extra attacker here, and so Mitch Welch scored to make it 10-7 for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks, and that's how uh, Game 1 ended in the NL Finals. It was 10-7 for the Calgary Roughnecks, and they take a 1-0 lead in the best of three series here and uh, have an opportunity to bring it home in the Rough House. So who led the way for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks here? Well, Dane Dolby... He had three goals and three assists here, as well. Reese Dutch had two goals and an assist here. And then Jesse King, he had a solid air game with a goal and three assists here. And then Riley Lowen also chipped in with three assists here. So, uh, you know, the usual suspects keep chipping in, and that's been one of the strengths of Calgary up to this point is offensive depth here. On the Buffalo side of the ball here, Shane Evans had a goal and four assists here. Josh Bryan, two goals and two assists, and Corey Small, two goals and assists here, and then Steve Perlo had two assists here. And actually, Buffalo outshot the Calgary Roughnecks in game one, 55 44. Hurston Del Bianco made 48 saves, while Matt Vink made 34 saves here. So now that sets the stage for game two as the series shifts to Calgary here. Calgary up 1 0, and uh, two possible scenarios could happen here. Calgary Roughnecks win, they win the championship at home. Or if Buffalo wins, they'll send this thing back to Buffalo for Game 3 on Friday, May the 31st here. So, uh, let's see what happens here. And I'm, let's say I summarize before we get into recap here, is that you'll get a lot more offense in this game. And this might actually go down as one of the best NLL games of all time with a nice classic finish here. So let's get going here. Well, just like the previous three playoff games here, the Calgary Roughnecks got on the board first here as Dane Domey continues his dominance just after the two-minute mark. So Calgary had a early 1-0 lead just like the previous three games here. Hello, Shane Evans ties it up three minutes later. So it was 1-1 game here. And then Amari Lone at the 8.5-minute mark makes it 2-1 uh, here for the Calgary Roughnecks before Buffalo scored Three straight goals in three minutes here in the first quarter here. Chris Cloutier, Chase Fraser, and Corey Small answer for Buffalo. So as we get in late into the fourth quarter here, it was 4-2 for the Buffalo Bandits here. I know there was a little controversy there too that during that three-goal stretch there, it looked like Dean Dobie scored another goal there, but then it was wiped out without a crease. It was wiped out for some reason, and play continued. But then Curtis Superman Dixon scores just past the 12 minute mark to make it 3 4 3 for the Buffalo Bandits. And that's how things ended after the first quarter. It was 4 3 Buffalo here. However, Calgary had a, a big second quarter here. But it did start off first with uh, Shane Evans scoring at a 2 minute mark to make it uh, 5 3 Buffalo here before Calgary started firing on all cylinders. In the second quarter here, as uh, Calgary scored five straight goals here, and by Jesse King, Zach Courier, Tyler Burton, Tyler Pace, and rather than one, it took six and a half minutes stretch there, but just like that, it went from 5 3 Buffalo, now it's 8 5 Calgary here, at the, and then we're up to the 11 and a half minute mark here, and then uh, one, one of these goals to note here is that the Tyler Burton goal here. It was a beauty as in my Vint was uh, looking for a long pass there. 
but he got intercepted up the center there and uh, got the goal back there. So uh, definitely uh, was a highlight real goal there, just how the sequence events there. And then the final seconds of the uh, second quarter here, each team scored a goal here as a uh, Chase Frazier scored with uh, eight seconds left there, and then uh, Dane Doby scored an empty netter here as Buffalo tried to have the extra attacker in here late there, so we head into halftime, 9-6 to six for Calgary here, so uh, hang on here and we'll win the championship. However, Buffalo came back swinging in the third quarter here, as we didn't see any offense. It stayed 9-6 to six until the 9-minute mark, as Chase Frazier started a 4-1 rally for the uh, Buffalo Bandits here. Jordan Durston scored twice with Matt Springer in between to get Buffalo back in this game here. Dane Doby was the only Calgary goal scorer in the third quarter here, but that did not happen until the final minute mark of the third quarter here. So uh, things did tighten up a little, and goaltending was definitely strong. But uh, Matt Vink definitely uh, tightened things up here. So after the third quarter, it was a 10-10 game here. Setting up, you know, what I'm going to say would be a classic finish here as we get into the fourth quarter here. So a 10-10 going into the fourth quarter here. Calgary up 1-0 in the final here. Things were looking good early as uh, Calgary got two quick goals. One from Reese Dutch and the other by Curtis Superman Dixon. So Calgary was up 10-12 at the 106 mark of the fourth quarter there. However... Buffalo kept hanging around there, and just before the halfway point, you know, just after seven and a half minutes of the fourth quarter there, Jordan Durston scored to get Buffalo within one. So it was 12-11 for the Calgary Roughnecks, and then Buffalo ties it up at just at the 11-minute mark. So it was 12-12. Dane Smith scored for the Buffalo Bandits here, and then this is where definitely the intensity grew in every shot. Every, it was... Oh, everyone was on there, was anxious, you know. Things were, intensity was growing by very, virtually every possession, every shot here. Chris Neil Bianco, uh, late in the fourth quarter here, actually made a save here. And then he made a long pass to Dane Doby here. This is going into the final minute of the uh, fourth quarter here. And it looked like Dane Doby, who actually was running down into the Buffalo territory there, while fighting off a bandit at the same time, scored with 55 seconds to left in the fourth quarter to give Calgary a 13-12 lead as the Saddle Dome was rocking. Everyone was anticipating, hang on for the final minute, we'll win the championship there. However, hold on here. The Buffalo Bandits, I mean, this is like basketball, where in the cross there you can call timeouts late so you can get possession going into the attacking zone here, but uh, Buffalo got possession in the timeout here. And they used it to their advantage here as Buffalo got into the Calgary zone here. And at the 14-32 mark of the fourth quarter here, Corey Small tied it up for the Buffalo Bandits. So we had a 13-13 game here with less than 30 seconds to go here and, uh, and a huge faceoff here. And then Calgary was actually able to get the face-off win, and they called the timeout, so they get immediate possession as they start off at their own blue line and go into the uh, Buffalo zone there. That's how it works here. So anyway, they had the shot clock all to themselves there and had possession here. And it looked like, you know, we were trying to run down the clock and try to get set up one good shot for the potential game-winning goal here. Calgary was able to get a shot away as time was running out, but it went off the post there. So uh, the game ends at 13-13 after the first qu fourth quarter here, setting up sudden death overtime here. So literally, next goal wins it. Either Calgary Roughnecks are jubilations with a win, or Buffalo scores jubilations knowing they're going back to Buffalo with a chance to win it in their house. But... Uh, after everyone gets their breath, after a two and a half minute uh, break, overtime begins here. And then how overtime started is Buffalo started off by getting initial possession on the faceoff here. 
And then they get called an early timeout so they can get possession starting at the Calgary, Calgary line there and then going into the Calgary zone here. So after the timeout here, definitely Buffalo, for obvious reasons, are determined to uh, end this thing early and send this thing to Buffalo there. And you know what? I didn't say they were this close for that to happen because Buffalo actually took a shot, shot in that there. I think it just missed the Calgary net. Although Christian Del Bianco was out of position there, and I was ready to brace myself knowing that uh, Buffalo was going to find the open net and win it. However, Zach Courier, thankfully Zach Courier was in the right spot at the right time because he made a huge save to block the shot and help out Christian Del Bianco there, and eventually was able to get possession in the corner there, in the Calgary zone there, and then Calgary was able to get the possession, and they called the timeout. So they can have possession going into the Buffalo zone. And this will be the first opportunity that Calgary had in overtime to uh, maybe end this thing here. So after Calgary's timeout, Calgary had a shot there. They eventually went off the Buffalo defender there. And then there was a hot potato there. But Buffalo was able to, you know, Calgary was able to get the ball. And have another fresh 30 seconds on the clock there with a shot potential glory here. So first, Jesse King, he had the ball there on the right side, and then he finds Roy Lowen in the middle there. And then on the left-hand side there, as I can see it right, because it happened on my end here, Reese Dutch, he had the ball on the left side there, shot it, and it went right in the net, and the Rough House was in a frenzy as the Calgary Roughnecks won the NL Championship in overtime by beating the Buffalo Bandits 14 to 13 here at the 112 minute mark of overtime here. So Calgary are your 2019 NLL champions. How about that? It was definitely a very classic finish there. And the this will be the third time that the Calgary Roughnecks have won the NLL championship. And this is the uh, all three times they were actually able to win it at home here. So yeah. This was definitely uh, a satisfying finish for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks here. As, uh, as cue that card here, we are the... Yeah, I mean, man, that was a satisfying finish there. So anyway, to finish up the recap here, while well, Dane Dolby got the... Finals MVP there, but as humble as he was, he actually called over Christian Del Bianco because I think he was just as much of a an MVP for the Calgary Roughnecks pretty much much of the season, especially when Calgary was not firing in all cylinders here. And then eventually Dan McCray uh, as captain gets to receive the Champions Trip Trophy and uh, got to celebrate it with his teammates here. So, uh, yes, we won the championship. Man, that's... Right now, it's a good time to be a Calgary sports fan here. So anyway, who led the way for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks here? Well, Dane Delby had four goals and three assists here. And then both Riley Lowen and Curtis Superman Dixon had two goals and two assists here. And then Jesse King chipped in with uh, one goal, five assists. And Reese Dutch, two goals, including the championship winner and an assist there. And then if you look on the Buffalo side of the ball here, and then Shane Evans, he had two goals and five assists here. Jordan Dustin had three goals and assists there. And then Chase Fraser chipped in with three goals. And then Corey Small had two goals, including the tying goal at uh, the require overtime, and then had two assists there. Overall, Buffalo did outshot Calgary 56 to 51 here, but uh, Christian Del Bianco, he was huge. And let's give another save, that one save to Zach Courier, too. So, uh, Chris Del Bianco had 43 saves there, and then Matt Vink had 37 saves for the Calgary Roughnecks here. So that's, uh, what I'm going to say, that's one heck of a playoff run here. Pleasantly surprised and unexpected on on who we drew, especially going into the West Final here. But, man, uh, this is just as jubilation as watching these guys win the Great Cup back in November there. But, uh, you know, I just have to... Uh, as I start giving my final thoughts here, I mean, it has been fun to recapping all the Calgary sports here, but, uh, you know, 
what a way to end season one. I mean, you got my Calgary Stampeders this month. Now you got uh, my Calgary Roughnecks this month. So we have both the Grey Cup and the NL Championship here. And speaking of, you know, Stampeders here, apparently at the home opener when the Calgary Stampeders take on the Ottawa Red Blacks to uh, celebrate winning the Grey Cup and kicking off with the Grey Cup rematch. Actually, I hear the Calgary Roughnecks will be at that game as part of the home opener. Celebrations showing that, look at who they won. But, uh, I mean, definitely, this is definitely a classic case of uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I felt that, you know, Calgary had, you know, a nice mix of uh, youth and veterans here. I mean, we had, you know, Christian Del Bianco in net there. It was, you know, it's only his second year, but he's, Proven to be one of the top goalies in the league. And then, you know, we had Dane Dolby, Curtis Superman Dixon. I mean, and then Reese Dutch was definitely a nice pickup there. I mean, heck, I couldn't even pronounce that guy's name at the start of the season when I read it on paper there. But, uh, you know, things definitely worked out for Reese at Calgary on how he fit in with the team and ultimately won the championship there. But, you know, you got guys like Riley Lowen. Actually, if you... Look, if you go, if you were at that game and they were doing all the interviews there, I mean, you got to look at Coach Kurt Malowski there. You also got to feel good about him because he actually was on the Calgary Roughnecks team when he won the championship as a player in 2009 20, you know, there, 10 years ago. Actually, that was his fifth trip to the uh, NL Finals there, and he did not finally get a championship until he won it. With the rough next there, but you know, Kurt Malowski, he definitely maybe took some heat here and there throughout the season and throughout the years here. But uh, you know, I got to feel good about him, about how he led this team and able got this team going in the right direction. And you know, feel good about him getting getting the championship there. But he also thanked his captains, you know, Dan McCray and Craig Hernett too. On uh, I mean, we've been led by the usual suspects here, but, uh, I mean, those guys definitely chip in and do their roles as well, and all the young guys that we drafted in the the off season there, so, uh, I mean, this is the first time in 10 years that the uh, Calgary Roughnecks have won the NLL title here, and, you know, it's definitely sweet and satisfying. I mean, the players, you definitely got to feel well, so happy for forget a championship. Well, Curtis Superman Dixon, he won the rookie year in 2011, and he played his whole career with the Calgary Roughnecks. So this was his first title. Curtis Manning was here just after the championship in 2009. He uh, this was his first title, and then, I mean Dayton Dolby. Well, he was a rookie on the 2009 team when we still had guys like Caleb Toth and. Tracy Koloski, who now, you know, some of the young guys might look at, you know, Dane Dolby and Curtis Superman Dixon as those veterans. But, uh, you know, Dane Dolby, I mean, he did get his championship his rookie year, but he didn't make a name for himself until the last few years there. And then his hair looks like a, a mad scientist, but Mike McMahon, one of the uh, assistant coaches for the Calgary Roughnecks, I mean, I know one of the players was first to give him a, Championship because he definitely long wanted to be a championship, but I mean, this team, I mean, they uh, they frustrated me throughout the year there. I mean, it's got to go all the way back to the home opener there where we looked good against the Vancouver Warriors there, and we couldn't finish things off and lost in overtime. And I just felt that this was a sign to come for the season here. And I mean, this was my first season officially become a season ticket holder. and I think they might want me to come back. I've already I've already renewed, and uh, there'll be a unveiling video when I do that when I receive my tickets in the fall. There, but I already got my thank you from uh, you know the the Flames and Roughnecks there, and uh, so I have re-upped. I mean, it's a great value, and I definitely was feeling the emotions going into the game and how tight it was, and uh, and just you know I was losing it when. Uh, Reese Dutch scored that goal there, and uh, we brought it home. I mean, I was in the stands in 2009 when I bought the ticket when the Calgary Roughnecks then 
beat the New York Titans, who that team is no longer around. It was 12 to 10, but the South one wasn't as full. Uh, I was also high up in the tour level there. I feel that if you're going to a lacrosse game, and while it's still affordable, you got you got to catch in the lower bowl there. So uh, I mean, it was definitely this championship was definitely a lot more satisfying just because of I followed this team all season. I've always casually followed the rough next year, but all the years that I also worked games at state there, I wasn't able to commit to a full season during the winter and and then, you know, go as many games there. And then it was last year that uh, it started off with getting that complimentary game ticket for the uh, Stampeders party there. And I went to the game and I was like, damn, why have I been to a Roughnecks game for all these years? Because I remember at least try to catch a game one game a year, but it's not till late in the season when I have less games to work at state there. But then I remember in 2011, the original owner, and I still you still got to give a big thank to uh, Brad Bannister, who was the original owner, and hopefully they can you know somehow recognize him as a builder that he had a vision and he took a chance that they thought Calgary was going to be a great lacrosse city and there's enough demand for lacrosse here. But after the 2011 season there, the team was losing money there and Brad Bannister was pleading for someone to step up and. By the team there, and he was at first was hoping maybe the Calgary Flames would buy him, but they originally initially didn't uh, buy the team. But then I made sure I went to that playoff game, and uh, I remember we were in the West Division final there, and we were favored to win the game and lost to the Washington Stealth, where I think Reese Dutch was playing for the Stealth at that time there. And then I thought that time, well. I guess I went to my last Roughnecks game there, and then during that off season, eventually the Calgary Flames was able to buy the team, which I figure makes sense because they play in the same building. You get at least 10 games of people buying beer, or merchandise, and food, and, and I just felt the crowds have definitely have grown. As you know, more people get a catch on the game there, and you know I've noticed more kids. I mean, it wasn't until after I graduated high school and I was aware of the lacrosse game and I played lacrosse, but, uh, you know, lacrosse uh, is definitely growing in here since the Roughnecks have been part of this community for almost 20 years here. And, uh, you know, winning some championships also helps in uh, keeping the fan base and keep growing the, ge keep growing the game. And, uh, you know, this is well get to what I plan to do in the off season here while... Uh, Actually, the NLL is going to expand to two more teams here as there will be 13 teams going into the 2020 season here. Let's follow along here, but the, the we have the Rochester Nighthawks right now. But that team, as is, will be relocating to Halifax. And Halifax will be rebranded as the Halifax Thunderbirds. Because you might have saw press release, well, they got two expansion teams. You got the New York Riptide with one team, which they'll be playing based out of uh, where the NASA Coliseum is, where the Islanders certainly share. And then you got a new franchise owned by Tarek Pagula and the Buffalo Sabres. So you'll have a new Rochester Nighthawks team, and they recently rebranded and got their logo here so what obviously I'm going to do here in the off season is just like I did this past off season with the uh, when the Philadelphia Wings and the San Diego Seals so I'll do a video on my feelings on looking ahead at the expansion draft and then thinking who the Calgary Roughnecks will likely lose in the uh, expansion draft and got some interesting decisions to make now after we've won the championship but uh I'll do that video and then I'll recap how the expansion draft went. That's probably not going to be until maybe August, September, and then I'll just do that draft recap video, which I did. So that's what I plan to do in the off season. I don't think there'll be any other big news or signings here. I don't think, I mean, maybe if there's a huge trade, I'll maybe make a video on here, but this is likely it for me making so many Roughnecks content until... The expansion draft and the draft, and then, you know, if I still continue on doing this, season two of my Calgary Roughnecks this month, 
as defending NLL champions here. I mean, man, that's sweet there. And I will put in some uh, photos here of the game and uh, put some extra production here. And so anyway, I mean, thanks for watching along here. But if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just uh, make sure you like, subscribe. And just like I did in my Calgary Stampeders video, yes, we won. Man, this is sweet. Won, it, won the Grey Cup, and now we won the NL title here. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.